Question number seven. Yasmin swims at her local swimming pool. Part A. She pays four sixty five each time she visits the pool. That's the cost every time she pays when she goes to the pool. Calculate the total amount of money she pays for seven visits to the pool. So we have four point six five times seven. So five times seven is thirty five. Six times seven is forty two plus three, forty five. Four times seven is twenty eight plus four is thirty two. And then we have two decimal place. You will move one, two, and that's your answer. Thirty two point five five. Moving on to part B, on one visit, she swims 40 lengths. The first length she swims is length 1, second length is length 2, and so on. So she swims 40 lengths on one visit. She swims on her back on lengths which have numbers that are multiples of 4 or 5. Calculate the number of lengths she swims on her back. So. This is the main point. So we have 40 length, she swims 40 lengths, and she swims on her back on the length that have numbers that are multiples of four or five. So the first step is we want to know how many numbers within 40 are multiples of four or five. So let's write them down. So we have number four, we have eight, we have 12, we have 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, and 40. And then for 5, we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and 40. So we can see that for multiples of 4, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 numbers. Multiples of 5, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8. So now we can see uh, there are some numbers that repeat. Uh, for example, 20 up and 20 down, so we cannot take them twice. I have to choose one times, and then we have 40 that repeats down. So in total, we have, so we have to take down 2, so we have 16. So in total, we have 16 length where she swims on her back. That's your answer, 16. Question number eight. The diagram shows a triangular prism of length 12. This is 12. The cross section is a right angle triangle with the sides of six, eight, and 10. Right. So on the grid, draw the net of the prism using a scale of one cm represent two cm. So now we see the drawing here. So the first thing we need to do is to calculate the side. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. So the main point is they have used a scale of one cm to represent two cm. It means that if it was 12 on top on the main drawing, on the drawing down, it will be six. If it was four, 8, it will be 4. So now let's just rewrite down everything that will be as in the drawing. So 12 is 6. 8 is 4. 6 will be 3. And 10 will be 5. Right. So now since we have the correct scale for the drawing down, down we can go and draw the, um, the shapes that are required to draw the net of the prism. So they have given us this a base. The base is 6, 4, which is 12 and 8 on the main drawing. So now we will have to draw the triangles. Right. So the triangle has side 3 and side 4. So 3 will be 3 and side 4. So let's mark 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. And same for this side. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. This side and this side. Right. Now we just have to join the points to get the triangles. So 
So now we have three sides of the prism. Okay, let's just join it. Okay, so we've done these two sides, we have the base, and how about the top? The top is this side and this side. This side is 5 on the drawing and 6 on the drawing. So, so we have the triangles already, and we have the base as well. So now we want to take this side which is on top. The top is basically a rectangle with side 5 and 6 on the drawing. So that's a 6, and we have to count 5. 1, 2, 3, or five just a rectangle okay almost done and the last shape that we need is the back of the shape the back has side three and length five so we are given the length length six so we're given the length already we have to take Draw the side. Side is three. So one, two, three. One, two, three. So that's the back of the prism. So once you draw that, you have it. And that's it for question number eight. The point is really very easy. You just have to Find the scale and then label the sides on the main diagram and then draw one side one by one. So first you begin with the side triangles and the top and the back. That's it. Question number nine. The students in a school each choose a piece of fruit to eat with a lunch. They can choose from either apple, a banana or an orange. So we have three fruits, apple, banana or orange. On Monday, Claudia records the fruit chosen by 30 of her classmates. Their choices are given below. Okay, so the first question is to complete the frequency table for the data. So we just have to count how many times apple happens in this list and same for everything else. So let's count apple. So we have one, one apple, two, three, four, five, six seven eight nine ten ten apple and now banana we have uh, one two three four five six seven eight eight banana and orange we have one two three three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve twelve orange so we have to check if the sum of everything equals to 30. So 10 plus 8 is 18, 18 plus 12 is 30. Good. Now the next step is on the grid below, draw a bar chart to show the data. So on one side we have frequency and the side is fruit. So we have to map frequency with the fruit. Okay, so we have three fruits, apple, banana, and orange. Okay, so three fruits, which is Apple, leave one square, banana, and orange. Right. So now the frequency of apple is 10. 10. The frequency of banana is 8. So banana is 8. And the last one is the frequency of orange is 12. So now we just have to uh, draw the bar chart. So first for apple, so 10, so that's the first bar chart for apple. And moving on to banana. The last one is
orange. Okay, that's it. That was pretty easy for the bar chart. Okay, moving on to uh, part B of the question. So in this section we have, on Tuesday, Ahmed records the fruit chosen by a random sample of 30 students. So total student is 30. In the lunch queue, his results are shown in the table below. So we have three fruits, apple, banana, orange, and the frequency is 8 for apple, 15 for banana, 7 for orange. So question number part 1. So use Ahmed's result to estimate the probability that a student selected at random chooses an orange. So we have to do number of people chooses the orange is 7 and over total number of people is 30. So that's the answer. 7 over 30. Okay, now part 2. There's a total of 180 students in the school. Okay, so use Ahmed's result to estimate the number of students in the school who chooses an apple on Tuesday. So we first have to uh, find the probability of choosing an apple. So we say, okay, so based on 30 students, 8 chooses the apple. So 8 over 30, that's the, the probability of choosing the apple. And now we have a total of 180. So we have to times 180 to find the results. So we cut out 0, this is 1, this is 6, 6 times 8 is 48. So your answer is 48 students chooses the apple on Tuesday. It's only an estimation. Factorize part A, 25x minus 5. So what is common with those two numbers? I can see that 5 is common. So I take 5 out. So what remains is 5x minus 1. And that is your answer. Okay, moving on to part B. We have 2x squared minus 18y squared. So what is common in those two? So 2 is common. So we have x squared minus 9y squared. So now we see that we have, we see we have square and square and 9 can be written as 3 square. So 2x square minus 3y square. We see we have one square number minus another square number. We can use this formula. Let's say we have a square minus b square is equal to a plus b a minus b so we will use the same thing on this equation so we'll go up that will be 2 x is a so x plus b is this plus 3 y and then we have x minus 3 y and that is your answer question number 11 part a write this number in standard form so we have to count the number of decimal place we move to the right so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it will be 8.45 times 10 to the power of minus 5. Now part B. We have P is equal to 2.7 times 10 times power 11. Q is equal to 9 times 10 power 12. Evaluate the following. Give each answer in standard form. So the first one we have is P plus Q. So what is P? P is 2.7 times 10 to the power of 11 plus 9 times 10 to the power of 12. So since the power of different, we cannot add them directly. So we have to change the power so it matches. So I can keep the first one the same. So we, we always change the one with a higher power. So we take one, one uh, 10 power, power 1 to this side, it will be 90 times 10 to the power of 11. So now the power is the same, we can just add them directly. So 90 plus 2.7 will be 92.7 times 10 to the power of 11. So your answer will be 9.27 times 10 to the power of 12, because your answer needs to be standard form. So then this part is P divide Q by Q. So what is P? P is 2.7 times 10 to the power of 11 and then Q is 
9 times 10 to the power of 12. So we can just bring this power up. So when, when we do division for indices, we can just put minus 12 here. So now we have 2.7 divided by 9. So that will be 0 0.3. So 0 0.3 times 10 to the power of 11 minus 12 will be minus 1. So now we have to write this back in standard form. We have to move one decimal place. It will be 3 times 10 to the power minus 2. So that is your answer. Okay.